In 2014, I decided to go back to researching residential schools in Canada. And I came across a small online article, CBC Indigenous, that was an interview with Edmund Matatawaban, uh, who is a former chief of Fort Albany First Nation, he's a survivor of St. Anne's Residential School, and he's also a, uh, an advocate for the survivors. So in that article, there was information that I had known about about the residential schools, about physical and sexual abuse of children. But there were two things in that article that I wasn't familiar with. And one is the fact that the Christian missionaries often forced the children to eat their own vomit. And the other was the fact that the Christian missionaries at St. Anne's Residential School constructed an electric chair in which to jolt the children. So sometimes the children were jolted for the amusement of onlookers, such as bishops, priests, nuns, uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force. Other times the children were jolted because they were being punished. And often the chair just being there was an instrument to instill fear in the children at St. Anne's. So in reading that article, I wondered why this wasn't front page news all across Canada, why it wasn't being covered every single day in the media, why there seemed to be no outcry from Amnesty International or the United Nations, and most particularly why the Canadian government hadn't called for a public inquiry into the use of the electric chair on children. So from there, I, I was, I knew that, you know, this story had to get out there. It needs to be well known publicly. Um, it needs to travel the world. People need to understand that horrific things happen to Indigenous children in Canada. So I contacted Edmund Matatawaban through Facebook and uh, sent him my thoughts and eventually a proposal and our conversations really began after that. So as you can imagine I had a million questions for him so he was open to answering any and all of my questions. Um, I did a whole lot of research on residential schools and as much as I could on St. Anne's Residential School and then um, in speaking with him we decided that yes this film is one that needs to be made so that the St. Anne survivors can get their stories out to the world. If I really wanted to get to the heart of the stories, we really needed to go to the community. Um, ended up getting a $10,000 donation for travel funding through the university that I was attending at the time, <clears throat> which it didn't cover all the costs uh, to travel to Fort Albany First Nation with a crew, but it covered um, just a little over half of that. So we ended up in Fort Albany First Nation. I went there not knowing whether the crew and I would be able to stay in the community because Edmund made it really clear as much as you and I have spoken and had lots of conversations unless you sit down with the chief and the chief gives you his blessing to move freely through the community and speak with community members, we don't know if you can stay. So it was really a leap of, you know, my personal faith that I would be able to go and talk to the chief and get permission for us to stay.